In our world today, we have elevated ourselves to become the focus of our lives instead of God. We have become lovers of ourselves rather than God. The Apostle Paul in his letter to Timothy warned of this. He said in 2 Timothy 3, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Doesn't that description sound like what we read on the internet on a daily basis and what we see around us in our world? Everywhere we turn, we hear phrases like self-esteem, self-confidence, self-help, self-motivation, self-love, and so many others. It's all about self. We are attached to the idea that our purpose in life is to live the best life we can and enjoy it to the full, maximizing our talents and resources to benefit ourselves and as many other people as possible. This is the justification we have created to minimize our guilt and sinful desires. We are consumed with building up our fortunes and increasing our businesses, building generational wealth, we say, and getting our children to the, quote, next level of education, wealth, and success with no concern for the things of God. While these sound like noble aspirations, they are lies in disguise. I fear that too many of us have become immersed in the world's philosophies. I'm saddened that even those who follow our Lord Jesus seem to sing the same tune as the world. While we are obsessed with increasing our incomes and building our retirement funds, Jesus says this to us. In Matthew 6:19, he says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. But surely the Lord wants us to make money, doesn't he? Yes, we need money in this world. But I'm afraid too many of us have given our hearts to the love of money. We love it more than we love the Lord. We desire more what is on the master's table than the master himself. We justify our love for money with all kinds of reasons. But in our hearts, we know that Jesus is not our first love. Our love for him does not burn and overflow. We go through the motions we think he desires, but our hearts are far from him. We do charitable deeds to make ourselves feel better, but we are not willing to obey the Lord. This is the rebellious heart, a heart that deceives we cannot be honest with God because we have fallen in love with the things we can see rather than the things we cannot see. We walk by sight rather than faith as Jesus wants us to. O oh Lord, forgive us for this. Let us love you with our whole hearts. Let our greatest joy be in knowing that we will be with you in heaven someday, not the temporary things of earth that always disappoint. Let us join the Apostle Paul as he wrote to his brothers and sisters in the Philippian church. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. And in the same letter, he warned about the enemies of the cross of Christ and reminds the church of where their real home is, 
when he said, Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not set our hearts on the things of this world. Let us set our hearts, minds, and affections on the things of God. Let us seek His will and His kingdom. Let us seek His heart and His purpose. Let my purpose, my dreams, and my goals fall to the wayside so that Christ may increase in my life. Let me die daily so that He may live through me. Let me surrender to Him all that is in me so that only He shines through me. I remember the words of the Lord. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels, and then He will reward each person according to what He has done. While we live in this world, we do not belong to the world. While we may work within a system, we put no hope in it. Our hearts are somewhere else. Our hope and salvation are not in anything we can see. We have put our faith in Jesus Christ, and indeed, we eagerly wait for His return. Until then, let us live with hearts that long for Him and Him alone.